if you look at that. Um, but again, the emphasis in the Church of Scientology is not on Sunday morning service at 11 o'clock. They do a lot of one-on-one -on -one counseling, a lot of training, a lot of um, learning experience, uh, much like we would akin to um, Bible study or, or Sunday school in a Christian church, for example. Uh, and so uh, that is the, the main emphasis. That occurs on a daily basis, uh, occurs throughout the day, but the primary attendance for those kind of classes is on nights and weekends. And the gentleman, and this goes to, to the traffic issue, I uh, understand the, the issues that you've raised with regard to traffic, and, and I understand I've driven up and down Ross Road all my life. Um, Round Hill does have a, a difficult entrance and exit um, movement there, and, and it's complicated in that area. Um, but in terms of the church, the primary time period when most people will be entering or exiting that site, the, max, the, the maximum attendance is on the weekends, on Saturday or Sunday, um, and then if, as you go down the scale, then during the week it would be at night. And those evening classes typically start at 7 or 7.30 at night, so people will be arriving after the, the 6.30 time frame that you uh, indicate was the, the 4.30 to 6.30 time period that would, is typically the problem. Um, but they do offer courses throughout the day. So um, there will be courses that will be going on during the day, uh, seven days a week. And, and so what that does, though, it allows for the number of people that come to the facility to be spread out. Some people come frequently. Some people, like I said, they've been on the rolls for two years and come during that two-year time period. So, um, you know, there are, just as in any church, there are people that are more or less active. Um, Big events, if they have a large church-wide event that they expect a, a large crowd, what they'll do what they do now, which is rent a hotel facility and have it at an off-site facility. Uh, the maximum capacity of the assembly area is 200 people. And as, as Nancy has indicated, that's driven by fire code and by other codes of uh, Sandy Springs. If they intend to uh, increase that. They have to make modifications to the building. They have to uh, show where their parking spaces would be, etc. Uh, we don't have an intent to do that, um, and so um, that uh, that should not be an issue uh, for special events. If they do anticipate a large crowd at this site and it warrants it, then they uh, would have a police presence in terms of having um, traffic control, etc. Um, and again, if they need to, they can, they can uh, show folks from many outside locations to, uh, to come to the site for, for example, the grand opening. When you might have a lot of people that don't come there on a regular basis that would be concentrated there at a one-time type basis. This is not, right, y'all are all familiar with Buckhead Church, it's right down the street and created a number of traffic issues for a number of people. I was one of those throngs that went to that church and still go to a, the new location, but I do recognize the, the issues that that uh, caused up and down Ross Road. So that was accommodating thousands of people that would come at a particular time uh, and probably now it's 9,000, so back then uh, on, a, on a Easter Sunday back then it was probably at that five or six thousand, but still substantially more than what we're talking about here. So we're talking about apples and oranges. I, I understand the concerns that we've raised. We will attempt to try to address those concerns. You've raised them, staff is aware of them now. We can address them in conditions. Uh, I've worked with Tricia many, many times in the past. Uh, I've been civic association, I've had a long history with, uh, grew up in the area. Um, went to school at Ridgeview High School and went to high school. So I, I'm very familiar of been up and down this road since I was a kid. So I know the intersection very well and know the issues and uh, we'll be able to try to address any that we can. Now I will caution you that there are uh, distinguished, uh, something that distinguishes a church from any other land use is RELUPA. 
which is uh, a law, federal law that's passed to protect religious institutions against unfair discrimination. Uh, and when you talk, start talking about taking an open op facility and then adding conditions that will restrict its use beyond which that were for O and I, when you're going to do it only because it's a religious assembly, then you have a tendency to run run up against RLUIPA. So uh, those are issues that we will uh, address as well with staff and, and others if that becomes a problem. So um, with that, I think I've addressed most of the questions that um, that have been raised. Parking uh, service lease doesn't anticipate parking. Uh, we do anticipate parking to be enough. Uh, if it becomes a problem, then we can get off-site leases, as uh, Nancy indicated, uh, or take the, any uses off-site. Um, contractor, I don't know if the contractor has been set yet. Um, Dunwoody is intending to close. Um, the property uh, does represent a substantial investments and those funds have been raised uh, and that, that facility is owned by the church uh, and paid for and they are in the process of raising the funds for the improvements. Yes ma'am. They have had several night meetings over the last two years of where there's been a good hundred or so cars over there. Can you tell us what those meetings were for? They've run until like very late in, at night like about 12 o'clock at night a couple times over the last few years? Our intent is to have hours of operation that would end at 11 um, at the site. And I can't address that because I was, I'm not a member of the church and wasn't a part of that at the time, but uh, you know, that is that is a rare event. There was one more question that was raised that I really didn't address and I'm probably the one who needs to address it, which was, are they going to use volunteers to do construction? The answer is that the city, and well actually the state of Georgia requires that the holder of the building permit has to have a contractor's license in the state of Georgia. So the answer is it can't be all volunteers because they've really got to meet the requirements uh, for, for contractors and for plumbers and for electricians and all of those. So they, this would be treated like any other commercial renovation in the city, which means that we review these plans, we ensure that they meet all of the city's and state's codes because they're one and the same, and we inspect them and ensure that they're constructed in that form. I just wanted to make sure that everybody understood that because that question got raised. And as a further point on that, if you notice, there was a cleanup effort this last, in the last couple of weeks, I've lost up my volunteers um, and I, so I'm sure they will have some volunteer help.